just as a bit of an introduction to the sport, uh, this is where it started, 1896. Uh, two Norwegian clam fishermen thought it would be quite a good idea to set off from New York, rowing across the North Atlantic Ocean to, uh, to finish in the Scilly Isles. Um, this was all for a £20,000 prize uh, put up by the editor of the Police Gazette, um, who was called uh, Mr Fox. Uh, unfortunately, he'd never paid out on his prize, so these poor guys then had to get a ship uh, back home again. Um, when the steamer that they were on ran out of firewood, uh, it was ord the order went out to burn anything that was, was flammable. These guys were like, we're having absolutely none of that. They got in their boat and rode back to New York uh, in the last uh, couple of hundred miles, which I think is just the most amazing story you can ever imagine. Thankfully, the sport's developed since then. Um, in 1966, the second ocean rowing boat uh, rode across the North Atlantic again. This is uh, John Ridgway and Che Blythe. Uh, again, a little timber, clinker-built boat, really small, uh, but exceptionally well put together, well-trained guys who are just basically really tough. Uh, the sport has moved on again, leaps and bounds since this second crossing. And since then, there have been a host of very different ocean rowing boats out there. Uh, we can see here there's some which don't look like ocean rowing boats at all. There are, uh, there's something that looks like a plane down here, um, which is uh, from New Zealand, uh, a new built boat. They've got something that looks more like a sailing yacht, but without a sail, which is uh, Atlantic Endeavour, and something which looks more like a submarine, which is luck over here. Um, Ocean rowing boats come in all sorts of shapes and different sizes, and, and now we're starting to see a little bit more standardization uh, and improvement on the, the previous mistakes of the past. We're introducing the Pacific Rowing Race, which goes uh, from California to Hawaii. Ocean rowing is such an amazing sport. You get to see fantastic sunsets and sunrises in 360 degree color, which is just something you never ever see on land because a building gets in the way, a tree gets in the way. Stuff means that you only ever see normally this tiny fraction of the sky. When you're at sea and away from land you get to see so much more of the sky and there's half of its sky, half of its sea and then the little fraction that remains in between those two fifty percent is your ocean rowing boat which is your world for your period of time at sea. Um, as well as the natural beauty of the environment, you get fantastic visits from amazing creatures. These, uh, this is a fin whale. Uh, we had three come and visit us uh, on the North Pacific trip that I did. Uh, just absolutely breathtakingly beautiful, incredibly gentle, and it was a, an honour and a privilege to be so close to one of the largest mammals on the planet who was so, uh, so aware of us and interested and inquisitive. And it isn't just on top of the water, uh, sorry, below the water, it's also on top of the water. Uh, albatross and storm petrels do follow you throughout your, your trip and come and visit and are literally just inquisitive uh, into what, what this ocean rowing boat is, what, what it's doing and where it's going. Um, and it's always a, a sign of luck as well uh, for mariners to see a, an albatross. So uh, to see them gracefully fly by is always a, a real treat. Of course, it's all about finishing. Uh, and there is no better feeling than stepping off a boat. It is brilliant being on board, but it is 10 times better getting off knowing that you've rowed there under your own power. You cannot look at a globe or a map in the same way again. It's just absolutely impossible. You look at the chart or the globe and you go, hey, I've rowed from there to there. That is phenomenal. And I've done that all by my own power. There wasn't an engine, there wasn't a sail, I wasn't sort of getting pushed or like, there wasn't anybody else. It was, it was me and my crew and us rowing and making it to our destination. And that's why in every single finished photo you'll ever see, people only ever look happy. Uh, it's just the, the thing that will give you cheek ache 
from, from that much smiling and finishing. Whether you finish in the middle of the night or the middle of the day, it really doesn't matter. There will always be a crowd that come out and greet you in. And it is a really, truly magical moment finishing any ocean row. The Pacific Rowing Race starts off from Monterey Bay, in San uh, just south of San Francisco in California, and goes uh, just over 2,100 nautical miles to Hawaii, uh, and uh, Honolulu uh, in particular, uh, just south of Pearl Harbor. Uh, we've picked these two destinations and locations because uh, of the prevailing weather conditions uh, and because, quite frankly, where else would you want to end up? Finishing in Hawaii doesn't get any better than that. There will be heaps and crowds of people so excited to welcome you in. Uh, there are no uh, adverse currents. The wind and weather does generally blow you in the right direction. Can't promise that, but historically looking at the charts, that's what it's, uh, it's due to do. And we'll discuss a little bit about that later on. So we'll start off in Monterey Bay. Uh, with up to 40 crews with a heap load of kit and equipment. We're going to help you get to that stage so that you're ready and prepared at the beginning of it all. We've got a whole load of stuff here from freeze-dried food, which we've actually been tasting earlier on. Uh, sorry to the guys in the US and Canada who have missed out on that great tasting opportunity. Um, was it quite good, guys? Enjoy it? Very good. Excellent. Mountain House definitely getting the thumbs up from the team here. Um, whole load of oars. We've got sleeping bags here. Uh, a day water tank for, for everyday use, a lot of toilet paper, uh, some snack bags. We've also got uh, a life raft here, some survival kit and equipment, uh, life jackets, sea anchors, which we also spoke about a little earlier on today, uh, and some other set pieces of safety and communications equipment, which are absolutely vital uh, in any safe ocean rowing passage. So we set off from this beautiful location, uh, Monterey Bay. Uh, there's an outstanding aquarium there. The, uh, the seal life is absolutely world renowned there. Uh, they've got a huge aquarium um, and yeah, the, the life that's going on under the water is gonna mean that we're gonna get a fantastic set of photos when everybody sets off. Um, they regularly go for whale sighting trips uh, on boats leaving from Monterey Bay. Uh, so really don't be too surprised if you get a visit from a couple of whales or a few dolphins as you, uh, as you set off on your first few days at sea. As uh, race organisers, your safety is absolute of primary concern for us uh, and we do everything that we possibly can to ensure your safe arrival in Hawaii. As part of that, uh, we will have a number of support yachts like this one uh, shadowing the fleet. They'll be there for non-emergency situations, but they will be able to help you in situations, things like if you break all your oars and all your spare oars, uh, things if you damage your seats and you've used up your spares, maybe your water maker's damaged and you're having problems with it. There'll be guys on these support boats who'll be able to help you and give you a much better chance at getting into Hawaii than if you were just on your own. Um, we'll also be providing a whole load of other assistance and help um, from race discounts, already mentioned Mountain House. Uh, we have a, a partnership agreement with them so we can give race entrants uh, significant discounts uh, on that freeze-dried food, which instantly saves you about $1,500, $2,000 uh, in cash, um, which is a brilliant start and it's tasty food, perfect. Um, we're already starting to provide a uh, start for our, our race entrance uh, prior to and actually at the start as well. We'll be there running scrutineering, we'll be out running these, these sort of introductory courses and then when you start to get your boats and get ready for the, the trip in a bit more detail, we'll be able to go and visit you in your uh, ocean rowing hubs. Um, we're aiming to take guys out in their actual ocean boats, maybe with a rib, maybe overnight over a long weekend, something like this, and actually give you the opportunity in a safe environment to test your cooker, test your water maker, test you know how your electrics work, but in a way that if you do get into difficulty, we can give you a tow, or if the weather changes, we can be there to help you. 
because um, actually the, the most dangerous thing about ocean rowing is when you're near land. So we'll be there during the times when you are near land to make sure you are as safe as possible. There's an entrant only zone on the website which has a heap load of information, hints, tips, list of supplies of various bits of kit and equipment um, which we, we know is already proving useful to, uh, to race entrants. Um, as part of uh, a, an organised event such as the race, you benefit from extended and increased PR and press and marketing. Because you're part of that increased environment, that is going to help you get more sponsorship. Um, we're also in talks with a couple of uh, documentary uh, filmmakers, um, trying to get them to bring on uh, or take the race on as a as a documentary uh, and that again will only ever help you get some sponsors on board because as soon as they see their sponsorship sign on your boat on TV they're going to be wanting to sponsor you uh, and that's another way that we help as well. Uh, we also uh, have a medical expert so uh, they'll be uh, providing help and assistance at the start but also as well as that we've got uh, cover with every entrant or every crew and entrant gets uh, an annual membership to uh, Global Rescue where you do uh, medical evacuation cover so um, as well as medical consultancy work so if you uh, damage a part of your body if you break your arm and need hospitalization they will physically come and get you pull you out of your boat and take you to a hospital of your choice anywhere in the world um, they will they are just reading through some of, the, some of their case studies of what they've done previously. It is just absolutely phenomenal at what they've done uh, to ensure their client's uh, safety. Also on top of that, they offer medical consultancy, which means that if you burn yourself and you've got your medical kit there, but you're not quite sure what to use, they're there to provide you with that 24 seven end of a phone assistance in terms of what to do, how to treat it. If you get an infection, they're there to tell you which antibiotics you should take first. Should you take painkillers? Can you mix the two? These are the things that, unless you're a, a doctor or a nurse, you don't know that. But these guys do. They're at the end of the phone 24 seven and they're providing that support, which is fantastic. Actually looking historically at Ocean Rose, it isn't that lightly, but it's good to have that sort of medical cover um, provided uh, by us as race organizers. One thing that we can't change is the weather. Um, and weather routing uh, is, is something that we do as much as possible to try and help crews decide on where to go uh, and what to expect in the future. Ocean rowing boats don't have much of a choice about what's going to hit them. They can't suddenly divert two or 300 miles out of the way. However, they can. Um, prepare for what's going to happen. If we know that a storm's going to hit, you'll receive your daily weather update. It'll let you know that there's a 30 mile an hour gust uh, predicted for the next two days. That means you can rest, you can recover, you know you to put the sea anchor in, be safe, and then move on uh, after that weather system has passed. And it's just knowing that that's, uh, that service is there and when the weather's going to change is really vital. Uh, as I've spoken about, we're also going to have a number of support boats, both uh, sort of land-based ribs and, and high-speed boats near the start, uh, near and around the start, near and around the finish, where the most support is required. But also, during the, uh, during the middle section, we will have a number of support boats following the whole fleet and providing that assistance. Um, and also, each of the boats will be individually tracked by uh, a unique a tracking beacon so we can see exactly where you are, uh, spot if there's any difficulties uh, and even if you lose communication, if your satellite phone breaks, we can find out exactly where you are, come and check that you're okay with one of the support yachts and keep you as safe as possible. And then you'll finish in Hawaii. Um, through all that support and help we really really believe that this could be you, it was Ros a few years ago, uh, but this could be you and your team rowing into Hawaii, into Honolulu Harbour, underneath Diamond Head. Um, and I really look forward to taking all of these photos of you safely arriving in Hawaii. 
Please visit us at newoceanwave.com to keep up to date with all the latest news about the Pacific Rowing Race 2014. Entries are now open.